Hello gardeners and thank you so much for watching Mid American Gardener. We are here to talk about all things gardening and we have three great panelists and I'll be inter I'll be telling you who they are here in just a moment. I was going to say interviewing you but actually they're going to be answering questions. Hi, I'm Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois, although it's about semester break, so that's nice. And my areas of specialty would be cut flowers and perennials. So let's find out who's here and what their areas of expertise are. And if you have a question, then direct it towards those areas, please. I'm gonna start first with you, John Bodensteiner. Okay, I'm John Bodensteiner. I'm a master gardener from Vermillion County. And <clears throat> my likes are hostas, tomatoes, vegetables. Uh, I've got so many different things in my yard that any shady. Um, so just about anything that grows, I like. Last week I was watching the show and the Meg question talked about a dipple. And I thought that I would bring it and just to show people, just because you had talked about the dipple. So this is a dipple. And it's really good for making holes and because it's quite sharp in the ground. So It worked so well for planting my leek plants last spring. Oh, it was so good. The other thing I brought was seed catalogs. Yay. We're starting to get them. In fact, I got my first <laughs> order of seeds already. Wow. Uh, but I wanted to warn people a little bit, you know, if you see, you know, these are fun to go through now and, you know, there's all kinds of special things in them. And uh, the thing is, if you're going to see some plants, if you're ordering plants, the plants are going to be five and six year old plants that they're showing a picture of. When they send it to you, it might be six months to a year old and they're going to be very small, very <laughs> fragile. And you may pay as much for one of those as you do going to your local uh, vendor and buying one. And you get to pick out the nicest one. You get to pick one out that uh, the color you like. Uh, there's all kinds of advantages. Plus you get to support the local, the local vendors. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only time I usually order something in a seed catalog is if I can't find it locally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they are fun to go through. Now's the time to start planning your gardens. Oh, yeah. And I just, I, you know, I already, like I said, I already got my first order in of specialty seeds that I just, I had, if you do have something that you really, really, really want, get your order in early because mm -hmm. sometimes they'll run out. Mm -hmm. Very good Thank advice. Thank you so much, John. Yes. And now let's throw it over to Marty Alanya. Hi, Marty. Oh, hi, Diane. Hi, my name is Marty Alanya. I'm a private landscaper. Um, Probably um, just general landscaping questions and perennials are my my first love. And when John says he likes tomatoes, <laughs> you'll notice a predominance of tomato pictures on those seed catalogs. <laughs> he's a nut. But if you have a tomato <laughs> question, he's the man. So, so um, shall I do a question? Yes, please Alrighty. do. We had uh, a viewer write in and say they're moving from one house to another local house in late December or early January and had several peonies they wanted to take along. Can they dig them up and transplant them successfully in winter? What is our advice on how to best move these peonies? David, you are in the perfect time <laughs> to just lift them. I assume you're talking about herbaceous peonies and not Japanese tree peonies, but um, herbaceous peonies for sure. You can just lift them and if you don't get them all then you can bless whoever moves into your old house with some more peonies because, you know, they're so long-lived and they're so adaptable. Plant them, uh, you know, maybe an inch deep, a little bit of mulch, they'll be fine. They'll be just absolutely fine. They won't mind a bit. Should you take the ball of soil with it? Um, you, I would, when I transplant them, usually not unless I have a, you know, if I have like a low spot and I need a little dirt in it, usually I just, I just, I use a garden fork. I pick them up and I kind of shake the soil off and I nestle them in where they're going to go in their new location. But, you know, it just depends on, well, on I, I your, well, if, they, if, they, you know, if they're moving now, but they can't, yeah. they won't have their mix house for two weeks. Can you put them in the basement for two weeks? Or? You may. Yeah. That's a good yeah. question. You can, now, yeah, good idea. If you're doing that, actually, um, you could shake the dirt off, but I would probably be more inclined to get a cardboard box, take a, sh a shovel full of dirt with the roots with the, and just set it in the cardboard box and put it in a, 
in a cool, cool place, you know, like an unheated garage, someplace that's not freezing, freezing yet. So you should be fine with that. Deep. Not too deep. Only about an inch, um, but an inch deep is all the peonies need, and they're hardy to Canada. You're golden. Mm -hmm. So what a great season for it, though. Oh. Some years you would, oh, oh yeah. yeah, have really frozen oh. soil and. We were, it, just, we were just discussing. I found a couple lilies I forgot to plant, yes. and here we are. No problem. <laughs> I'm going to plug them in tomorrow. But not always. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not always. Okay. Well, thank you, Marty. And let's go on next to Dr. Bob Skirvin. Hello. I'm, I'm Bo Bob Skirvin, and, and I teach at the University of Illinois. My specialty, I teach beginning horticulture. That's what I teach. And my specialty is fruit crops, and in particular, blackberries and raspberries and blueberries and things like that and so anyway and one, <coughs> the one thing I want to show you tonight was in, in the in the grocery stores there's all sorts of different kinds of bags of citrus that's not a very okay. good bag anyway. but they, these bags <laughs> and boxes of citrus that are coming in individual ones of all sorts that, that are coming in and this is the time of the year to buy them they're really good they're, right now they're in sale and and it seems like every every week there can be a different kind of citrus as you can get. Uh, the, these are, they say, are, are mandarins. They kind of have a little nipple on top here, like a thing, and there uh, there's some of their tangerines. They're the, the smaller ones are tangerines, and some people like these better. My wife says these have a have a funny taste to them. You know, I like them. I, I was mm -hmm. raised in Southern California. <laughs> and I, I eat citrus all the time. But it, as you're going going through the grocery store, if you go to the grocery store, there's a new kind of, of citrus. Just, you know, just try them. You can buy one, you can buy a bag, buy one, whatever you want to do, it doesn't make a difference in there, but take and try them. They're really good for you, they're healthy. These guys are always fun because they're so easy to peel. So, yes. you know, some people get really disgusted by that, them trying to peel the dumb thing. And you, can, you can't beat that, that's really good. Plus, they taste good. It comes right off. Yeah, it's really nice. So, it so get, get out, get out oh, there and yeah. try the. Yeah, well, it smells yeah. so good. If only if you were here <laughs> in the studio, you could Yeah, you like that. That's really good. Oh, that's anyway, great. Anyway, so be, be sure to be sure to buy them right now because later on, when by summer, summertime comes, the season is pretty well gone. And they're, they're, well, okay. these are really good right now. All right, very good tip. And now I want to talk about what you can do so you can register for Herb Day. It's going to be the last one since uh, Chuck Voigt is retiring, but it's January 23rd. And get Did your. Does it be named Herb? No, you do not have to have the first name Herb. You okay. can just, anyone can go. That opens it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying Herb Day, oh, okay. not Herb oh, Day. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Because I'm not really English, <laughs> so. But anyway, it's uh, very easy to get to Lincoln Avenue at the Wyndham Garden Hotel. And if you call Linda Harvey at 217-244-1693, uh, you can also Google Herb Day and probably register online, but it is online registration, $70 and it is a, a great meal, and the um, the speakers this this coming January are fantastic. I've heard three or four of the five, and they're it's just a showstopper. It's really going to be great. Well, I, vendors, you said vendors, vendors are going to be there. there. It's limited seating, so and you do want to get in. They try their best. So John and I were talking about it. We're both going, mm -hmm. so I don't know. But please do sign up if you can. Well, let's go to a little Did You Know video next and then to the phone lines. Before modern materials were developed, dried sunflower stalks were used in the manufacturing of life jackets. They provided buoyancy. Plants great. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Plants are great. So anyway, well, we need a few more phones, uh, people to call in on the phone lines, but we do have a, one right now, and it's Ken on line two, and he has a pruning question. Hi, Ken. Hi. I uh, appreciate your call, and I enjoy it weekly. Thank you. Uh, what I was calling about, is it too late to do some pruning, like on a knockout rose? I want to trim it down from like four feet down to about two feet or a foot and a half. And uh, I also got some fire bushes I want to cut back so the lateral buds will kind of blossom out and bush them up better than rather than be tall. Mm -hmm. You sure can. You can prune them now. <clears throat> um, if you have a, an issue with rabbits in your yard, you may want to put a little bit of chicken wire around your roses. I live a little bit outside of town. 
and I don't ever have to prune my roses because the rabbits do it for me. <laughs> Sometimes they do it so well I have to buy new roses. So um, older ones, established ones, they fare better. Um, you can also do this in the spring, in the early spring. Mm -hmm. But you know, <coughs> if you're, if you really would like to do it now, it's a fine time. I mean, everything's pretty dormant. So um, typically, typically, you want to take no more than a third at a time out of a large plant. So <coughs> the roses, as you know, are pretty resilient, and burning bushes are as well. But still, a good rule of thumb. A third, if you have to, a half, um, but you're going to stress the plant a little bit if you go farther than that. So, yeah, I and like, you can always like prune those in the summer too yeah, if they get a little leggy the here and there. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like to do mine now just a little bit, mm -hmm. shape them a little yeah. bit, and then re trim them in the spring because come, yeah. come springtime, you're going to have some damage from if you get a heavy snow, you're going to mm -hmm. have some stems breaking off, you're going to have some die back, yep. and that way. Yep. You're not going to have trimmed it too far, and then the the weather get into that. So yeah. I like I like really doing my I trim a little bit now, cut the the rose buds off and 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 kind of round it off a little bit. Anything damaged? Yeah. But other than that, I I do mine in the spring too. So yeah. Well, and uh, well, good point. Good point, John. Because if you do a little bit now, and the ro and the rabbits help you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you still <laughs> you still have a plant left in the spring. So yeah, I think that should that should probably well, do it for you. Well, in terms of also the fruit trees, it's time to prune. It's just perfect, perfect time mm -hmm. for the fruit trees, and a lot mm -hmm. of the plants to get in there. You can take in mm -hmm. and start pruning them back, and all the way through through oh, winter yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Remember, and you can do it in t-shirts. So yeah, <laughs> right. And this weather is incredible. Saw a guy with shorts on today. <laughs> Bob, talk about blackberries and yeah. things like that. People oh, yeah. are always asking how yeah. to and when well, do I prune? Well, the, the yeah. raspberries, the red, red raspberries is really what you want is you want to thin them out. And you want like, like six plants per square foot because red raspberries, they sucker and you, they mm -hmm. take over mm -hmm. your backyard. And so you can go through the rototiller and tear, narrow the rows and then, kind of, then just take a thin out. And the, the best ones are the fatter the stems, the mm -hmm. better they produce. So you take out the little itty bitty ones in there and you'll be better off that way. Uh, blackberries is the one that's a little tricky because the blackberries, the thornless blackberries, is they die back from the tip. So that's my hands out here, the tip. And so what happens if you take and prune the plants right now, you'll, t you'll, t you'll be damaged the plant. So you leave, leave those and the plant will die back. If you cut it here, it'll start dying back from right here and by the time end of winter, you may lose your plant. But if you leave it alone, it'll start dying back here and it'll be dead to here. You prune off the dead part and you're ready to go. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a good, good time and, and black, black raspberries, remember they're the ones that send out these big shoots that go down at tip and then they, they spread that way. Mm -hmm. Is you can take out the, the tips right now and then the, the lateral branches to cut them back to about that long. And the, the, you can do that right right now with no problem. But blackberries are a little trickier because mm -hmm. they're at the time of the year. Okay, boy, um, thanks, Ken. We really those. thank you. We really enjoyed the pruning question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, Ann's question on line three, and it's about raised beds. Hi, Ann. Hi, um, I love your show. Thank you so much for taking my call. Thank you. I am tired of my very flat backyard. I would like to have a raised area, not so much a raised bed, okay. but a raised, a raised area. All right, like a burb. Mm -hmm. How how what should how do I do this, and what should the base be? If, if I see a frame, if wanna, if, if you if you don't want a frame around it, if you don't want it raised as such, you can just have whoever wherever you're going to get your soil from, just have them drive a truck up back it up and have them drive away as they unload the kind of rake it up uh, along the edges and form a nice berm and then you've got a raised bed if you don't want if you don't it's want the wood on the it, side yeah. or the the or stones stone or, yeah. you know if you do then <laughs> it's a little bit more work but you know you can rake it back when if the ground is fresh and put your rock and then kind of rake it up uh, against that or your your um, your wood Mm -hmm. uh, or whatever you're, whatever whatever you're going to use. edging material. But you is. don't have to use an edging. No. You know, it doesn't say that. I mean, it's a little no. bit nicer if you're going to have it in the grass so that the weed, the grass yeah. doesn't, you know, I've got some zoysia that loves to. It will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll crawl right up there. You also, something, I don't know what the, the uh, terrain is like in your backyard. Flat. 
<laughs> but <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I know she said flat, but I'm still I'm thinking um, you might want to have a professional come in and look at it just to give you some advice about grade and where the runoff might go to a little bit of higher ground and you know things that you might not think about they might be able to give you some really valuable think advice about, about east that. west north south oh more, yeah for but sunlight I mean, on your but even just if you live in town you have to think about drainage and whether yeah. or not it's going to run into your neighbor's yard and you're going to get sued and that kind of thing um a lot of my work is in town so and uh, if it's too high and yeah. you plant kind of um moisture needing plants yeah you know you need to get yeah. you don't want to make the berm too high because mm -hmm. then you'll have to really have drought mm -hmm. resistant plants yeah. and I th and just yeah. have it gradual yeah I'm just thinking well especially with flat ground I mean if you had a low spot that'd be one thing but you want to I think it would be worth your effort to to get um, a local professional in there and just have them give you some pointers about you know where the runoff would go what the drainage is like um, the exposure what you're thinking of, of planning, just run some ideas by them and see if they can give you some helpful tips. Well, great. Thank you, Anne, for that question. Yeah. We enjoyed that one as well. Well, now they're we have- They're all fun. They're yeah. all, that is <laughs> right, they're all fun. They're. Well, let's go to line five, and Tom has a question about philodendron. Hi, Tom. Hi, and uh, welcome to the show. I just love your show. Uh, hey, I've got Thanks. a question for you, and I also have an answer on your raised bed. I started using raised beds almost 10 years ago because we have a bunch of big styrofoam 4x4s, and I took the 4x4s because they work better than the wood that always rots and turns and everything else. But the styrofoam bed, you just put your 4x4s out, make your square, and they last forever. <laughs> hmm. and, uh, I hadn't thought about that. I had not I thought about that. I love them right. because hmm. they produce so much more than just throwing the seeds out. Mm -hmm. And the question is, uh, I've raised philodendrons at work underneath of a fluorescent light. Mm -hmm. The outside edges are beautiful and green, but now for some reason the insides are dying off and the, all the leaves are all turning yellow. I keep checking the water, uh, the fertilization and the, uh, the water percentage wise. I only water them like once a week, that's it. But now the insides are all turning yellow leaves, and a lot of them are starting to die off. But the outsides are perfect, and it's about oh, 35 foot long. It just might be an aging problem, you know. Yeah. After so long, yeah. the inside where you might the, have to prune a little you, bit. Yeah, you might have to prune yeah. and, and cut off some of the the real new stuff and take it and put it where the older where they started, mm -hmm. and and. Just make holes and get a dipple, and, and, and they'll <laughs> root. There you go. They'll, they'll, they'll root. Put they'll root there. right. There just you go. Get mm -hmm. right in there because I know yeah. some of the my, my mother-in-law has one, and it's I think almost 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And we do that every so often, you know, mm -hmm. cut it off because uh, it's it's yeah. just reached its age, and the, the, like you said, the leaves start to turn yellow. They fall off. Some of them will turn brown. Mm -hmm. And if you just cut that healthy edge off. <clears throat> Take the old one at, at the ground level, cut it off, make a hole, stick it in, and you got yep. it. it it's, well, it's interesting too with the philodendrons, if you, if you take a look right at the base where the leaf is, there's often little roots, there's little knobs mm -hmm. there. The roots are already formed. They're already formed, yeah. yeah. So it's They're really, really easy. Yeah. 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 It's really They're easy to go. And so if it's a, you know, like if it's a, if it's a large pot or a, a hanging pot and the interior part, I mean, you might have one long strand that's 35 feet long, but if the in, if the main part of the pot is very overgrown, you're just not getting enough light. They're not, you know, they're getting the, all mm -hmm. the all the nutrients are going to the ends where they're trying to move out. So yeah, needs a haircut, I think. Time to rejuvenate it. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Okay, thank you, Tom, for your question. Let's go to Shelley's question on line six about blackberries. Hi, Shelley. Shelley, are you there? Line six? I hear someone, but they're not talking to me. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to have to go on. Sorry, Shelley. I think you're there, but you're not listening to us. <laughs> okay. Let's go to line seven. And Mike's got a question about overwintering plants. Hi there, Mike. Yes, I was wondering how to overwinter hen and chick in containers. Oh. I never seem to do well with that. 
Do you have an unheated garage? Uh, a Yoder building. They probably do, or you could just let, I mean, how big a pot are we talking about? If you got it like one of those little strawberry pots where they're coming out of the sides and the holes, you can just stack some straw on top of it or some evergreen boughs. I mean, usually I don't even they're do pretty anything. hardy. I just leave mine in the ground and yeah. I don't do anything with them and they seem to be producing, they just keep getting more and more and more all well, the time. Well, are yours in a pot? But his is, is mine is in the ground. Yeah, yeah his, his is in, in a, a container. His well, I've got some in a pot too and I just leave. Oh, well, you just leave the pot. I just yeah. leave the also. pot outside. Yeah. You might want to, I don't, I don't know, if you haven't had luck with them over winter, you might want to find a protected place for that pot and then um, stack some straw over it, some evergreen boughs, maybe put a little bit of uh, netting or something over it, maybe burlap, just to hold all that insulation in place. And one and thing we do with a lot of our succulents is we overwater them in this, in, when we bring them in, we overwater them yeah. and they drown, so to speak. Yeah, you don't, so. you don't need to bring them indoors at all. I mean, they're very hardy, but... Yeah. Uh, just, just a little extra protection, something you can remove in the spring probably ought to solve your problem. The straw is hollow, so it holds the air, but it doesn't get really wet and sodden, mm -hmm. so. Heavy. That should probably help, I hope. Okay, well thank you for your question. We're gonna go to line three. Jim has a question about something that John had worked on this year. Line three, hi Jim. Hi, um, yes this is for John. And in the spring, he did a segment on grafting tomatoes. Yes. I tried the uh, same tomatoes, and I did not have luck because they grew at different rates. I uh, wanted to know what your results were. I had, I, mine were, were, were okay. I did a side graft. I did not cut mine off completely. I did a approach graft where I took this tomato, uh, the, um, uh, Amelia tomato and I had another one it was the mortgage lifter and I just scraped the sides off of each one I made a, a narrow cut and I tied them together and let them grow like that together and then I cut the Amelia off because that's the one uh, at the ground that's the one that I had as far as the uh, <coughs> rootstock. the rootstock mm -hmm. and then the mortgage lifter I, I cut the uh, top the bottom off of that and they did fine i had real nice mortgage lifters okay well that's a good follow-up no thank you for that uh question, <coughs> jim now let's go to an email and i think john do you have a yes you? i i have a tomato question oh, that's what i was thinking okay <laughs> um, Odd. yes um, <laughs> uh, i i'm attaching a photo of our tomato plant taken today I take it this was a little while ago because I don't think we have tomatoes right now. But can you please tell me what the problem is and how we can treat it? We live in Urbana and watch your show. Uh, thank you. Uh, I believe that the problem is early blight. Um, what we want to do as far as uh, taking care of it is to remove the infected plant. Uh, if, if it's too far gone, uh, you can uh, apply a fungicide if, if it's, you catch it early enough. Fall cleanup, or now cleanup, is really essential. If that plant was diseased, you wanna make sure and get every leaf, every stem, any fruit that's laying around the area, get it completely away, uh, and then next spring, plant the tomato in a different area if you can, and mulch it. Uh, once you get your tomatoes up, keep them uh, thinned out so that the air circulation is good in it. Um, don't plant them too close together, again, because of air circulation. Make sure they're in a good sunny place. Um, don't water uh, overhead, uh, do um, ground watering, uh, drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. um, the thing, it, this year was terrible because we had a <laughs> cold, wet spring, and, and then it never really warmed up until the end of July, and then then it did, then we had that dry Drop part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then the roots yeah. had dried back. And so it was just one of those years that, uh, another thing to look for is to look for a tomato plant that has a whole bunch of letters behind it. Uh, that Those are all <laughs> disease resistance. <laughs> <Good idea. laughs> 
That's a so good way of well saying said. it. Well said. That's good. I <laughs> like great. that. Yeah. Like you got a PhD yeah. in yeah. Yeah. the end. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. good. Thank you for that. And Marty, what about your email? Yeah, we have Ooh, another make email. Make it quick. About Amanda <laughs> yes. Levine. I've overwintered it, she says, and have grown uh, to about five feet long. Should I trim it back before putting outside later? And how warm should it be? I would prune it back. Yes, Barb, I would prune it back. And probably to, uh, you know, a foot, foot and a half. They grow quite rampantly once they get going. And I wouldn't put it outside. How warm should it be before it goes outside? Warm. Um, no freezing. Is it, is it a tropical plant? Yeah, it? yeah, <laughs> Mandevillas, yeah. Yeah, so um, someplace in a, you know, semi-shade, um, it's going to need a trellis. I would think when you bring it in in the fall, you would prune it just by cutting the vines off and so you can get it in. <laughs> so that should okay, do well. Okay, with that I'm going to sneak in <laughs> and say thank you so much for watching and thanks to you three for being here. It's a great time to talk about your <laughs> questions. So have a great week gardening. Bye-bye. <laughs>